Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths video on Key Stage 5, the second derivative and the nature of turning points. Now we've seen, if we have an expression for y in terms of x, so let's just say we had y equals x cubed plus 3x squared. We know that when we differentiate to find dy over dx, that allows us to find the rate of change of this expression, or the kind of gradient function, as we can call it. So that was 3x squared plus 6x. But in fact, we could differentiate this again to find what's known as the second derivative. This is the first derivative. and we differentiate again, we get the second derivative. So the notation for this is actually d squared y over dx squared. I'll explain why we get this notation a bit later. So if we differentiate this again, that's going to give you 6x, because we times by the power, reduce power by 1. And the 6x, we just drop the x, that becomes 6. So that's known as the second derivative. And what this kind of represents conceptually is how the gradient is changing. Remember, when we differentiate, that gives us the rate of change of something. Now, if dy of dx represents the gradient, the gradient function, then when we differentiate it, it tells us the rate at which the gradient is changing. How is the gradient changing? And that's going to be particularly relevant in a second. And by the way, the reason this notation arises is that when we differentiate y with respect to x, one way we could write it is using this notation here, d over dx. And that's a function which says, I want to differentiate this thing with respect to x. And we could always put that y at the top to become dy over dx. Yeah? But if I was to differentiate again, I'm going to take the d over dx of y and differentiate again, do d over dx of that. Now we can sort of write that d times d as d squared, and the dx times dx is just dx squared. You might think it's d squared x squared, but the dx is like a single thing, so it doesn't make sense to square the d here of y. And then again, we could put the y at the top to get d squared y over dx squared. So that's where that notation comes from. But don't worry too much about it. Just accept for the moment that that's how we write the second derivative, where we've differentiated twice. And you might be wondering, well, if we have functional notation, how do we differentiate it? Well, when we differentiate f of x, we know that becomes f prime of x. And if you were to differentiate again, that becomes f prime prime of x, as you may have guessed. So let's use that to solve this first question, an OCR problem. Given that f of x is equal to 2x to the 3 over 2 minus 2x squared plus 10x, find f prime prime of x, so the second derivative. So let's first differentiate once to find f prime of x. Remember, we times that number in the front, the coefficient, by the power. So 2 times 3 over 2 is 3. And then it's x to the power of, reduce the power by 1. So 3 over 2 minus 1 is half. The minus 2 gets times by the 2, so it's minus 4x, because reduced the power by 1. And the 10x, we just drop the x to get plus 10. And then we just need to differentiate again. So f prime prime of x, 3 times half is 3 halves. x to the minus half, because half minus 1 is minus half. That becomes minus 4, and the 10 is dropped. And there we go. That's the answer. Now, for this second one, it wants us to find the turning point, and then it wants us to justify whether that turning point we found was a minimum or a maximum point. Now, how can we use the second derivative, the d squared y over dx squared, to decide whether we have a minimum or maximum? Well, let's look at a maximum point and a minimum point, and let's also look at a uh, a point of inflection. Do you remember that a point of inflection just meant where the curve is changing from turning right to turning left or vice versa? Now what can we say about the gradient just before and just after these stationary values? Well before we can see that the gradient is positive because it's going uphill. Here the gradient is zero and just after that turning point, the gradient is negative. So can we see that the gradient is gradually decreasing? Because the gradient is going from positive to negative. So if the gradient is decreasing, that means the gradient of the gradient is negative. So we can see that d squared y over dx squared is negative. I know it's a bit confusing to sort of talk about the gradient of the gradient, but you can just think of it as how is the gradient changing? Well, how is the gradient changing here? Well, the gradient is initially negative, then the gradient is zero, and then the gradient after that point is positive. So we can see the gradient is 
increasing, so therefore the gradient of the gradient is positive. And finally, what can we say about the gradient just before and after? Well, the gradient before is positive, the gradient here is zero, and the gradient after that point of inflection is also positive. So it's a bit more confusing here, because the gradient is initially decreasing to get from positive to zero, but then it's increasing again after zero. So we can no longer use a second derivative in order to determine if we have a point of inflection. And the technique we basically have to use in this particular case is that we had to find a value of x just before that stationary value, find the gradient at that point, and then again pick a value just after that stationary point, find the gradient there, and if the gradient before and after is positive, then we know that we have a point of inflection. Or if the gradient before and after is both negative, then we also have a point of inflection. Now the way to remember this is I just remember if you have a maximum point, then the second derivative is negative, and if you have a minimum point, then the second derivative is positive. So I kind of think of the opposite. So let's use that principle on this LXL question here. A curve has equation y equals, where we want to differentiate, so let's write these as powers of x, 12x to the half, x to the half means root x, minus x to 3 over 2, minus 10. Now we want to first determine the turning point. Recall from our turning point video that to find it, we just differentiate and set to zero because the gradient at the turning point will be zero. So dy over dx is, well, we times a 12 by the half, so it's 6x to the minus half, half minus 1. Um, we times by the 3 over 2, reduce the power by 1, and the minus 10 disappears. Now we have to set this equal to zero because we're finding a stationary value or a turning point. And then I've sort of mentioned the past, if you have negative powers, I tend to write this equation without negative powers. So this means 6 over root x, whereas that means 3 over 2 root x equals 0. And then because we've got over root x, I'm going to times both sides by root x. So that becomes 6 minus 3 over 2, root x times root x is just x. And then if we just add 3 over 2x to both sides, that gives us x is equal to 4. And because we want to find the turning point, the four coordinates, we need to plug that 4 back into the original equation. So y is going to be equal to 12 root 4 minus 4 to the 3 over 2 minus 10. And we could just use a calculator to do that. That's going to be 24 minus 8 minus 10, which is equal to 6. So our turning point is 4, 6. Now, the second part, justify whether this is a maximum or a minimum point. So I've conveniently written up here, just to remind us how we work it out. If the second derivative is positive, we have a minimum point. And if the second derivative is negative, we have a maximum point. So let's find the second derivative. This was our dy of dx, so we need to differentiate again. So d squared y over dx squared is 6 times minus half is minus 3x to the minus 3 over 2, because minus half minus 1 is minus 3 over 2. Then we times the minus 3 over 2 by half, which is minus 3 over 4x to the minus half. And because we're particularly interested in this point 4, 6, what's happening here, we need to sub in the 4 into that. So when we sub that into this, we get d squared y over dx squared is going to be equal to, so I tend to write 4 equals, so I can now use the answer key, so minus 3 answer to the power of minus 1.5, minus 3 over 4 answer to the power of minus half, and that gives you minus 3 quarters. Now that gradient there is less than 0, and therefore we have a maximum point. So what you need to write in the exam is once you found that second derivative specifically at our turning point, you then need to explicitly say whether it's less than zero or greater than zero and therefore conclude whether it's a maximum or minimum point.